Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and we've got a real treat today. My daughter, Jessie Rashi, is a professional painter, and her landscapes with cows in them are just gorgeous. Before the kids got here for Thanksgiving, I used my pattern for a cow, covered it with paper mache clay, and then sent it home with her. And she took a video showing us exactly how she painted the cow sculpture as a Jersey cow. Mine is a Holstein cow, hers is a Jersey that brings out all the subtle changes in the shapes on the pattern. It's just gorgeous. She's got a couple of shows coming up and she really should have been preparing for those <laughs> instead of painting the cow. So I'm really thankful that she was able to take the time to do this. I'm going to let her take it over now. It's going to be kind of a long video so I want her to get straight to it. And I also want you to notice that brush that she's using. I've already ordered myself one. You'll see why. Here's Jessie. Hi, I'm Jessie Rashi, and I'm doing a guest post today for my mom, Johnny Good. And uh, thanks so much for having me. So the first step on this beautiful cow will be adding gesso. Just using plain white gesso. I've watered it down a teeny bit so it flows better. I'm putting it on pretty thick. I'm using the paintbrush texture. I think that'll look like hair Then the next step. I have a palette here that's specifically for acrylic paint and it has a sponge layer underneath that, that keeps the paint wet and it really helps so that I don't have to worry about the paint drying while I'm trying to, to work on something. So I've put out uh, white, uh, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, and ultramarine blue. And so I'm just going to mix up a tan color. So I have a, a, a lot of white, a blob of cadmium yellow, a little bit of ultramarine. It goes a long ways. So I just used what was on my knife from scooping it and just a teeny touch of the cadmium red. I mix these up and see how they go. That's too yellow, so I'm going to mix in some more red, a little bit darker. Maybe a little bit of a lizard crimson. I always spend a lot of time with my mixing. This this color is for her cheeks and her chin. It's a pretty color. It's a it's like this nice warm tan color. And it doesn't hurt anything if, if your color is a little bit warmer or cooler, a little bit yellower. Jersey cows come in all different colors. The darker brown will come right over this, but we'll mix it in and it'll be really pretty. Having the gesso still wet is helping because some of the gesso is pulling down to make hair. If I had this over to do again, I would not let the gesso dry quite so much because it's in the couple spots where it's wet, it's really neat. So here's the first coat. I'm going to quickly mix up the next color while this is still wet and also leave some of this on my palette and keep it wet in case I need to work it back in. I'm adding quite a bit of, of water to it to make sure it stays juicy. The palette knife is really useful for saving paint. I'm scooting it all into a nice little pile so it stays wet longer. I'm going to mix up the darker color that's on her forehead. It's basically just a burnt umber. So if you don't enjoy mixing paint like I do, then there is no harm in getting a burnt umber acrylic paint. And so I'm using some ultramarine blue, some cadmium red. But yeah, I, I love mixing up paints. So I, I always just start with the primaries. I think that's pretty close. I'm gonna mix in a little bit of alizarin crimson. I want this to be a really nice warm brown. So I'm using this brush again. It's called uh, Princeton Select Filbert Grainer, three quarters inch. And it has these short hairs in the middle and then longer hairs that come out and it's been making really nice hair texture. So I'm just kind of flicking it down at the ends See, it's making this really nice hair texture right there. And her forehead hair will come down over this, but I want to give it something dark to come over. And 
I'm just uh, very lightly tapping the brush here so it doesn't leave too dark of marks. I just, I want it to kind of hint at the hair. And again, I'm just kind of hinting at some hair right down along the edge of her muzzle. Just kind of tap, tap, tap to make her some, some eyelashes right down here. These aren't all eyelashes. Some of it is just the dark fur right under her eye. So, and try to make it kind of soft and subtle. So I'm going to come in for the eyeball with just this. This is a really inexpensive size 10 brush that I got at a hobby store. But it's got a nice point to it. All right. Now it's time for her muzzle and the tips of her horn and just a little bit on the inside of her ears so um, so that there's something for the hair to come down over. So I'm going to start with a really dark here. And any paint that I'm not able to use, I, you know, I'll i save it and I'll use it for sketching in my next painting so it's not wasted. And uh, you've probably noticed if you've been using acrylic paint for a while, the more water you mix in, the more the paint will change color after you've put it on. So if you mix a lot of water in, it might look kind of light and then it'll darken up quite a bit once it dries. My mom had put this nice line right between her upper and lower lip and I'm going to follow along with that. So the side of this brush is making a nice straight line. And it sort of unintentionally uh, made this shape, which I think is great. And I'm gonna follow along and um, give her just a teeny bit of a smile. It's very subtle, but it, it's right in there is this tiny smile. And then we'll come on back with a little bit lighter paint on, on the bridge of her nose. So next I'll do the horns and just the tips for these ones and then it'll be the lighter color coming up. I looked at a whole bunch of Jersey cow pictures and it seemed like some of them had horns that were black all the way down and some of them were just black at the tips and then had, had more of a cream or brown color below and I'm doing a little circly motions to push the paint down and, and get a nice soft texture at the bottom. A little bit of dark paint for the ears. I'm going to add a teeny bit more cadmium red to warm it up since these are the, you know, sometimes cow's ears look really pink. This is all going to be hidden so again it's just giving something for the hairs to, to contrast with. I'm going to do the, the sort of warmer brown for her forehead and her ears and then do the really light color on the bridge of her forehead and her eyebrows very last. And the palette's keeping these colors nice and wet. If you don't have one of these palettes like this, you might want to put some saran wrap over the colors you're not using. For this medium brown color, I'm starting with cadmium red and cadmium yellow. I'm just going to add a little bit of the burnt umber type color that we mixed up, our dark brown, and a little bit of our cream. Let's see where it goes. I just mixed that into a little bit so I can see if I like it or not. It's a nice warm medium brown, like a terracotta type color. And so I'm mixing in a teeny bit more of the dark brown. I think this is a little bit dark for the forehead, but it's great for the ears. So I'm going to stop right there. I mix in the water after I, I mix the color since it will uh, change it quite a bit. It'll change how it looks, but then it'll dry more like what it looked like before I added the water. So you can tell it, it did lighten it up right there. With the ears, their ears are so cute and furry. So I'm going to start with just a little bit right in here and kind of brush upward to get that that hair texture. 
So I'm going to bring some hair up and then some hair down. And get all the way around the outside. I'm going to bring it out just a teeny bit on the other side. You know, they have all different colors, so um, if you mix up your colors differently, uh, you just have fun with it. You can't go wrong. So that's just a little bit of the under color on the brush, kind of mixing with this nice new orange. I'm going to take some of that new mixture and put it right over here on the edge of her ears to make the ear transition nice and subtle. So her ears have all this texture on them now and, and some texture on the back. And I should say, I just love all of my mom's sculptures, but I'm particularly partial to cows. So this is so fun getting to paint this up. So we're gonna do some red on her forehead and some, some white right on the bridge of her nose. I like this orange color quite a bit. I'm gonna stick with it. And again, this is, you could buy this as a medium brown or a terracotta brown uh, already mixed up or a burnt sienna, but I like mixing it with just cadmium yellow and cadmium red and a, just a teeny touch of blue. I'm going to keep this dark undercoat coming through a little bit. So I'm just lightly brushing down and you can see hair is already developing. And these are going to be the, the final hairs, so I'm being really careful here. And if I didn't have a brush like this, I'd probably put on the, the big parts of it and then just get a tiny little pointy brush or liner brush to paint the hairs on individually. Put some hair in the back. So I'm just making sure that the places where my different colors meet, the um, that hair texture is coming through. And I think that'll make it feel like there's hair everywhere without having to paint hair everywhere. Let me give her a little bit more forehead hair. Just a little bit lower so you could see it um, even at an angle like this. So this is one of my super ratty brushes <laughs> and because it's been used and abused so much the hairs are all out of it and I think it'll make a nice texture for the eyebrow area where I just want it to be a little bit more subtle and then I'll use this this other brush that you've seen a lot of for for any hair that I want to mix in. So I paint a lot, I paint every day so I have a giant tub of, of white. Make sure not to contaminate it. I'm going to start with pure white and if that seems like too much then I might mix a little bit of our cream color into it. I'm just doing like a tap tap tap. To get a nice soft color and I'm going to leave a teeny bit of the colors underneath to um, give it a little bit of texture. And all these crazy hairs are putting a little bit of hair texture and a little bit of just kind of a softness. It's putting a really nice texture on there. It's kind of random. It's It looks like really short fur. And I'm just creeping up on where I want it to go kind of slowly so I, so I have a little bit more control. And I'm leaving that smile there, but just a little bit. I'm covering it up a teeny bit, but uh, 
I want it to be in there kind of subtly. Okay, I'm leaving my white paint really thick. I'm just putting in enough water to make it move. I'm leaving a little hint of, um, of eyelashes under there. Okay, so she's down to finishing touches. I'm going to use a little bit of black. It's ivory black. I don't use it very often. I, I don't use it to darken colors or anything like that, but sometimes if I just really want something to pop, I'll use it. So I'm going to take um, a little bit of ivory black and, and just start with the eyes and see if I need to mix in some other colors to um, can warm up the black a little bit. Nope, that's going to work just great. So just plain black. Just doing right around her like eyeliner area. I'm going to give her a giant pupil. Then I'm going to go next to it with a dark brown, but a really warm brown, with some ultramarine blue, some cadmium red, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit more cadmium red. So you can see that I go through a lot of paint when I when I paint things and part of that is because I have been painting with oil paint for so long I really like it when my paint stays wet and I can mix them together and part of it is because I I paint so much that um, you know my paints don't get wasted and I have this nice palette that'll keep them wet for next time so we can give her some nice brown eyes and you know eyes aren't they might be perfect <laughs> in real life but you know when you paint eyes they really don't have to be perfect to look right and then just a teeny bit of the beige color and darken that up a little bit and do a little bit of a, a line of the white underneath and the more kind of wobbly it is the more she'll look like her eyes are a little bit wet And I'm gonna give her a little eye spot. The cow is done. I came back with the black and used up the rest that I had on my palette and just put a little bit of hair um, through here to give it a little bit more texture. And I used a little bit more of the dark to give some little chin hairs and some subtlety right there. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Jesse. It was so nice of you to do this for us. So everyone who's watched the video, make sure that you leave a comment for Jesse down below just to let her know that you appreciated it. I'm sure you did. Be sure to go see her website at jessiesfineart.com because that's where she puts those beautiful landscapes, including the ones with cows. Those are my favorite. And after you've done that, come on back and visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.